Hey everybody! Group activation in the games Frostgrave, Stargrave, and Rangers of Shadowdeep is something that's caused a lot of questions, debate, and confusion that I've read about in comments and on online forums and have seen in battle report videos. So in this video I'll be explaining how group activation works for three of Joseph A. McCullough's games. Hey everybody, I'm Alan with Bricks and Blocks Gaming, tabletop gaming with bricks and blocks and helping build your gameplay foundation. In this video, I'll be defining group activation, explaining the often misunderstood standard activation of your team leaders, explaining something that's easy to miss about activations in Rangers of Shadowdeep, and explaining why it's generally a better strategic choice to not do group activations. So now, let's get to the bricks and blocks of group activation for Frostgrave, Stargrave, and Rangers of Shadowdeep. First, I'll point out that activating your leader figures works exactly the same in both the first and second editions of Frostgrave as it does in Stargrave, and also as it does in the Frostgrave offshoot game Ghost Archipelago. Since these all work the same, I'll be clumping them together as the Grave games in this video. Rangers of Shadowdeep works slightly differently, and it also was changed between the original release and the later Deluxe Edition. Although there are some slight variations in the specific wording in the Grave games, group activation for these games and Rangers of Shadowdeep is essentially declaring you're making a group activation, then selecting your leader and up to three soldiers, or less with Rangers, that haven't already activated that turn, and are within three inches of the leader, then one at a time, performing just the movement actions for each of these figures. Once they've all moved, or chosen to forfeit their movement action, then each of these figures performs their second action, one at a time. The second action can be anything the figure is normally allowed to do, and the order the figures perform their second action in does not have to be in the same order in which they performed their first movement action. So, you can move your wizard out of the way, then move the thief into combat, followed by the knight, then, for their second actions, attack with the knight, then the thief, and finally, cast a spell with the wizard based on the outcome of the battle, like healing if you lost the combats, or an attack spell downrange if you're ready for the next threat. So basically, the leader, plus three soldiers that are within three inches, move them all, then do their second action. A common and easy mistake to make is an assumption that this is the only way to activate more than just your leader in their given phase. However, there is a standard activation option. In the Grave games, you again select your leader and up to three soldiers within three inches that haven't already activated that turn, and have each of them perform both of their actions before moving on to the next figure and so on. So there are two options when activating your leader, group activation or standard activation. The original and deluxe Rangers of Shadowdeep, along with all of the Grave games except for Frostgrave First Edition, contain the wording, group activation is a special case distinct from the normal activation explained in the activation rules. I think the exclusion of this wording in Frostgrave First Edition is probably where all of the confusion about group activation came from, hence the author's decision to add the wording in all of his other books. And to further clear this up, the official FAQ for Frostgrave First Edition and Stargrave both include elaborated wording to differentiate group and standard activation as two separate options, and the author has stated online that Frostgrave Second Edition works this way as well. Also, because of this, it's safe to assume Ghost Archipelago, and Rangers, with the similar wording and same author, work like this as well. Rangers of Shadowdeep does have some additional things that I'll point out about both group activations and standard activations, and these were changed slightly between the deluxe and the original versions. In the original, a ranger could activate with just two soldiers, instead of three like you can in the Grave games. In the Deluxe Edition, which made some changes to make the game more challenging when playing with multiple rangers, 
only one soldier can be activated with the ranger in a two-player game, and no soldiers can be activated with them in three or four-player games, which means group activation isn't even an option at that point unless the ranger has some other means, like the call-to-action heroic ability, allowing them to activate additional soldiers with the ranger. Another major difference between the two versions is that when activating soldiers during the ranger phase using the deluxe rules, the wording about soldiers needing to be within three inches of the ranger to do a standard activation was removed. And it was clarified in a rules update that these soldiers do in fact no longer have to be within three inches of the ranger. This is really helpful as it opens up a lot more options regarding timing your attacks and maneuvers around when creatures will be activating. However, if you want soldiers to participate in a group activation, they do still need to be within three inches of the ranger. But something unique about the deluxe edition rangers when compared to the original and the grave games is it's the only one that allows you to do both group and standard activations in the same phase. So if you're playing solo and can activate two soldiers in the ranger phase, you could group activate your ranger and your knight to move them into combat so they can support each other on their attacks. Then have your archer on the other side of the battlefield fire an arrow at another enemy. So when activating your leaders, it's important to know when it's more advantageous to do a group activation or a standard activation. The most useful time to do a group activation is when you wanna move multiple figures into the same combat so you can use the figure's second actions to attack with support. It's also helpful in situations where an ally is blocking a spellcaster's line of sight or a pathway. Since you can't move through friendly figures, you technically climb over them at half speed as if they're obstructions, group activating will let you move the roadblock out of the way, then have your spellcaster move and cast their spell, then decide your roadblock's second action based on the outcome of the spell maybe to pick up a treasure that was moved to their feet by telekinesis, or fire an arrow at a figure now weakened by a plague of insects or glow spell. But since all figures involved in a group activation have to either do or forfeit their movement action before any of the figures can do their second action, if you always do group activations, you'll find yourself wasting movement actions from time to time, or choosing not to activate your soldiers until the soldier phase simply so you won't waste any of their actions. So, under most circumstances, it usually makes more sense to do a standard activation with your leader plus a few soldiers, not a group activation. So let me know in the comments if this was new information to you, or if there's other ways that you like to use group activations in Frostgrave, Stargrave, or Rangers of Shadow. I'm Alan with Bricks and Blocks Gaming. Thanks for watching, and play well.